We're back. What a surprise. It is. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, we don't need to start making it out like it's a surprise that we're turning up, I don't think. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. We're not going to do that. Uh, instead, we always come back. It's not a surprise. We, no, it's not. No, it's, it's, we're back, we're back. We're just busy bees. Uh, busy life people. is a bitch and, and all that stuff, you know. Uh, but anyway, we have a guest today. Uh, joining us today is my friend, Ian, who's, who's from Cow Soup. Hello. And Cow That's Soup is, is where we do the other podcast stuff when we do it uh -huh, unless uh -huh. we forget or you know shit happens <laughs> yeah yeah generally shit does happen yeah yeah but we manage but we, we do still, manage we're still around we need, we, we're gonna have another round of uh, uh watching now talking about the boys so if you want to get updates oh. on the boys weekly then you know i won't lie okay. that wasn't what i was expecting i thought you were going to say there was going to be one for acolyte there will be one as well. For that. Okay. I don't Acolyte, know how we're going to manage. I was going to say, Acolyte comes first. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of gone onto the radar for me at the moment, Acolyte. It's, it's just like, that. it's Star Wars, but it's just gone onto the radar. It's, it feels like it's further away than it actually is. I think, yeah. it's, think it's because it's we're in a year where there's not a whole lot of, like, uh, tentpole franchise stuff coming out. It's so that, all the... coming out in June. That's that's all it <laughs> yeah. is. Everything, Everything comes is out coming in out in June. June. House mm -hmm. of the Dragon um, is coming out in June. The Boys is coming out in June. Uh, well, I'm I thinking like... more like because Marvel's not really releasing much mm -hmm. beyond Deadpool, and then there's not really that much Star Wars happening this month, this year either. It, mm -hmm. We can't. I think it's very easy to forget that there is still stuff coming out. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. You could say that. You could say that. That's the way I'm saying it anyway. <laughs> yeah. We're about to start filming uh, Doctor Who watching now as well. Ooh. That's that's what I'm That'll be doing interesting. later on. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be yeah. salty as hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't, I, look, I didn't I didn't think it was terrible, but it was strange. <laughs> there you go. You're on the same page with Ian. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought the first one was terrible, Katie. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was balmy, but mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm in that way of like, okay, we're we're introducing an entire new audience to this. I can see what they're going for and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I'm hoping that they regain a level of seriousness as we go. Yeah, because <laughs> like you know, there's it's it's very light at the moment. One could almost say a bit American. <laughs> it's a bit. Oh, no. they, they swung too hard, the opposite way right. from where it was with Jodie Whittaker, which yeah. was preachy and serious and now it's just ridiculous and ridiculous like i don't mind camp um in fact i think i prefer camp to tempting to be serious but like not really saying anything you know um at least space babies had like a message in it like like very quietly they suddenly they kind of slipped in the sort of um uh you know the what's the word i'm looking don't for don't fuck the education system don't fuck the education system there was a lot of stuff about um uh, uh you know abortion essentially uh, um as a sort of sneaky theme which is you know what we like about the russell t davis area is like he does actually he still says stuff <laughs> even if it's wrapped up in a very strange package <laughs> such as a bunch of babies being pushed around by green men in I'm lycra not... <laughs> it freaked me out <laughs> The babies freaked me out. <laughs> it was there's a level of uncanny valley that's come with this new era of Doctor Who, where it's like you've got money now, but you clearly still don't have enough money to do what you want to. <laughs> so everything's still that level of like, oh, so the visual effects haven't improved that much. That's almost comforting to me. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, uh, I anyway, would we'll... like to ask if you want to introduce the. Oh yeah, that part. <laughs> Um, yeah, I can do that. Hi, everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before, and sometimes TV shows. I'm Katie. That's Lily Kay. And we have Ian with us, as previously mentioned. Huzzah. 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 Yay, we did it. Hmm. Um, alrighty, uh, do you have news for us? Katie? I've got a bit of news. I've got more news <gasps> than I usually do, but so I'll fire through it. Bits and pieces, so let's let's just um smash through. I've got the first one. The bear is back on June twenty seventh. 
I'm so fucking excited about this. Um, and I've been very much enjoying all the comments saying that, oh my god, Kami finally got out of the fridge. Just, it, it, it hasn't stopped being funny to me every time I've seen it. <laughs> but I am very excited about that one. Um, uh, it all seems the episodes are releasing yeah, at the same time. Day, yeah, though, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. All, all the episodes are dropping in one day. And it seems like they're both dropping in the UK and the US at the same time. Um, which wasn't the case last year. There was about a month sort of gap between those two. Not that some of us paid attention to it. <clears throat> um, but yes, I'm very excited about that one. And then I bring up this next one because I think it ties into this one a little bit just in the fact that they're releasing around the exact same time is that the Quiet Place Day 1 released a second trailer, which I know Lily was very excited about. We watched, we Fucking both watched great. it and uh, yes. it, it looks very good. But that's out on June 28th. So I bring it up mostly because I think we haven't discussed this properly, but like I'm now suggesting that we do a quiet place first, and then the week after we do the bear. Um, yes. In terms of reviews, because it gives more to pe people more time to watch the bear, because there's going to be a lot of episodes that drop at once. So quiet place first. That's quiet place video. first, and then we'll do the bear the week after. But we will be doing both because we're both very excited for. I mean, I'm also very excited for a quiet place, but I'm going to give that to Lily as being a bit more excited for. Um, <laughs> In that sort of space. Um, my next one was another one that Lily actually brought to my attention is the fact that Sigourney Weaver is apparently in talks to be in the new Mandalorian and Grogu movie. Um, yes. That's literally my only comment on it. It's just uh, very exciting for Lily in particular. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> when you sent it to me, I was just like, oh, so they've made this movie for you then. <laughs> It's for me! It's for me! I hope they're gonna release it on my birthday. That would be like the Honestly, it really would be like the universe com <laughs> just coming together and <laughs> just like a little birthday gift for you. Um, oh, I'd love that, anyway. Heart, yeah. um, Jonathan Bailey seemingly has confirmed his involvement in the new Jurassic Park. Jurassic World! Jurassic World, World. movie, you know. Um, Jurassic franchise, there we go, that's a bit of a yeah. way to put it. I can't find any articles about this. The only stuff I can find is when he was in talks for it. There's been no like confirmation on like a, 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 a journalistic level about this, but I feel like this is pretty... Yeah. It's pretty... It, that, it seems like confirmation to me. He, he It wasn't yeah. subtle in any way, shape or form. Nope. <laughs> he was nope. on a Jurassic World thing and then he posted the cup moving from the sound of, you know, the dinosaurs moving around. That's confirmation so. enough. I think, it it's, I think it counts as confirmation. I'm just somebody who likes, you know, first... I suppose he is more of a first party source, though. I mean, he is, is, yeah. is in a way. But, you know, I like, I like my articles from my trusted news sources when they confirm these things. Because so I don't like to speculate on things that haven't been confirmed properly. But I think that that's close enough to being. It is, it is close enough. And then I would just like to say that Jurassic uh, franchise just got even better because we have now Scarlett Johansson joining in and Jonathan Bailey as well. So, like... It's good stuff. It's gotta be. So good. I mean, you, you've got me more invested with the inclusion of Jonathan Obviously, Bailey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was just like, I figured you would be. Final Fantasy fourteen is Jonathan Bailey <laughs> taking over the world. Bridget is Jonathan Bailey. No, it's it's it's, it's, it's Bridget. No, it's Final Fantasy fourteen. Um, twenty eight <laughs> days later, uh, it seems to be set for a twenty twenty five release. So far, we've 28 just twenty eight years later. Did I? What did I say? Hey. Shit! Hey. I wrote years as well. <laughs> Fuck me! Twenty eight <laughs> years later, I d I knew what I meant. Set for a twenty twenty five release. It seems all I can find is summer twenty twenty five at the moment. So I don't think they've got a specific release date. But I did think it would be inter. I think it seems interesting that it's probably going to be lining up with, um, the what is a think might be the last Mission Impossible movie coming out that time because it was meant to come out this year but then because of the actor and the writer's strikes they had to delay filming um, mm. so I imagine it will be out in summer next year so all I'm saying is it looks like it's going to be a really good summer for movies mm -hmm. <laughs> next, okay, next, next year. Is producing but we don't know if he's going to be he, in it but the cast has so far it's looking interesting you know yeah. got it, um, I, um, Aaron Taylor Johnson is one of them. I just can't remember who. The and Ralph Fiennes is the other one. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Interesting. It looks good. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly, which is I think is probably the one of the more surprising pieces of news. Um, and I was so surprising. I went, wait, did I know about this? Is this a thing that we knew? Is the fact that we've got more Lord of the Rings movies on the way, starting with um, something called The Hunt for Gollum. Gollum. Yes. Um, uh, it's literally when you guys sent the news to me, I was like, this seems too big for me to have missed. Is this brand new? It is brand new. <laughs> As it turns out, it was in fact brand new. It kind of came out of nowhere. I feel like... What? 
Yeah, that's the, the making, didn't know. Peter, Peter Jackson's no. making a new trilogy Peter, of Lord of, Lord of the Peter Rings. Jackson and then well. Peter Jackson is doing them. It just feels like we are kind of like it, that's kind of the way I reacted to it. I was like, I slipped into a different universe. This is like this is exactly how I felt. I was like, sorry, <laughs> where did this come from? Andy Serkis is directing, and mm -hmm. uh, Peter what? Jackson, and uh, <laughs> everyone uh, from the producing team is coming back to produce all three movies. And the first two is uh, going to be around the hunt for Gollum. Uh, and Andy Serkis is returning as Gollum. At what point in the timeline is this? Well, I, it did, the article I looked at didn't really say, it just said an unexplored... Um, Period. I'll see if I can find it again on the on the Hollywood Reporter. I'm guessing but... between Bilbo and and Frodo. Uh, probably, probably. I I I I'm guessing that it's it's gonna be like, you know, between between the two. <laughs> probably it it's either gonna be between Bilbo and Frodo, or it's gonna be before Bilbo. Uh, that's that's my best guess. It's uh, called the Hunt for Gollum. Yes. That's so right. I feel like that it implies something you know like a specific time period but i don't really uh, that's, why I'm, that's yeah. why I'm saying yeah well, in, in in the the time of ridiculous survivals in fil in films and tv what if he survived the volcano <laughs> fuck no no they would never do that he hung on to a rock and as it turns out no, he's fuck still no. around no no, 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 he no, just no. coat he's no, just no, no, no. he's just a bit skinless now he, oh no i was just gonna out, say he'd you know? been baked uh, yeah, he's, 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 he's like charred black. Um... No. Stop. Stop it. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> I don't. I don't want that. Yeah, true. There you go. Uh, all right. That that was the movie. But yes, that's all That's all my news. I'm probably yeah. missing something, but, you know, that um, I didn't want to, you know, get take too, many, too much time. It's so good, it's so good, because we still have the other segment where I'm going to ask, what did you watch last two weeks? <laughs> because we haven't been doing this for two weeks. Uh, we can start with Ian. What did mm. you watch? Well, um, what did I watch? I knew this segment was coming and I I totally forgot. You didn't, you didn't prepare? Yeah, I didn't I didn't prepare. Um, I have been re-watching Wonderfalls currently. Okay. Um, um, Kate, Katie's got a, a confused look. I don't know what look. that is. You should so I'm watch looking, this. I'm looking this up. Especially you, to be honest, Katie. <laughs> Me? <laughs> yeah. It's, um, I think it's Brian Fuller's old show. Oh, okay. Interesting. Before Pushing Daisies. Oh. Hmm. It's like, it only got like a, a 13 episode or 20 episode run in America. Um, but it's about this girl who has inanimate objects tell her to do stuff. Um, and it's, so it's, and it's like thought, it's oh crazy. sorry I just recognised um, uh, the woman I was like hey that's yeah. Alana <laughs> uh, she is yeah she's she's a psychologist in Hannibal and Lee yes. Pace is in it as well mm. yeah yeah cool I've not yeah I've never heard of this show um, it looks fun though you yeah. gave something new to Katie um, and yeah and then I've been I watched the the Planet of the Apes, and uh, what I've been, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, and then uh, uh, at Lily's suggestion, I've been trying uh, Kingdom. Um, <laughs> she gets to everyone eventually. <laughs> <it does. laughs> um, but it's uh, that's slow going because I need to concentrate, and I've been struggling to concentrate lately. <gasps> I'm like four episodes in. That's but it's it's good. It's just like, like four episodes in. Okay, fine. Fine, you can get away with it for now. Lily, you've literally been doing the exact same thing for the past, <laughs> like, two months. <laughs> shh. Shh. <laughs> so, shush. <laughs> shush. <laughs> Katie, what have you been watching? Um, uh, I haven't watched a whole lot because I've been... Well, I mean, I have been watching a lot of of thing but it's not been like tv i've been catching up on dimension 20 fantasy high junior year because i've been very behind and i um wanted some comedy for a little while so i caught up with that the other day and it's been you know it's been a great time i love i love mm. i love those guys they're very they're very funny people and it's been a nice sort of like bomb 
um for you know a couple of stressful weeks uh at, at work even though i do keep falling asleep during them because i'm tired when i get back from work um um but today i watched anatomy of a fall which i really liked um and is one i think i'm going to be ticking over and probably liking more the more time passes afterwards and I, I get to kind of process it a little bit more but it, i think it, it i can see why um it, it did so well um with the critics and and audiences Mm. alike actually and why it did so well at the well you know why it got nominated so much at the academy awards um sandra hula um is a powerhouse in it she's really good and the kid whose name i actually don't know off the top of my head but the kid who plays her son is excellent in it he's mm. so good um and also i'm not gonna lie that dog what an incredible actor <laughs> That dog is priceless, to be fair. Um, it was just like, I mean, there's a couple of things where you're like, how did you get that dog to do that, though? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's that's crazy. Um, but uh, it's I really enjoyed it, actually. Um, yeah, it's one of those ones I'm going to be taking over a little bit more and finding other bits and pieces that I liked about it a lot. But I did, I was, um, after I finished it, because the movie is about you know it's it's in many ways it's a courtroom drama it's also kind of a murder mystery thing but it never re mm. it never actually gives you any of the answers it just gives you information like you would get in a court um as part of that's kind of part of the point it's you, you you're getting information and all this sort of stuff and you you get to draw your own conclusions as you would if you were a jury and all that sort of stuff but i went on tumblr afterwards to see if there was any like a whole lot of the discussion about like whether or not people thought she did it and all i found was horny posting over the lawyer and, <laughs> and i went i shouldn't be surprised about this and yet here i am <laughs> surprised um but yeah it was a good movie um and to be fair the lawyer was he was a pretty man uh, Lily, you seem to have muted yourself. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't seem to that like you've done it on there. I feel like you've done it through your microphone somehow. <laughs> yeah. I can't hear you. <laughs> and now we oh. wait. No, can't hear you. I am assuming you can hear us. Yes. Oh, there you are. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, because I accidentally pulled on the cord <laughs> while you were speaking, so it's like, <laughs> like that. This, um, this might be a problem later. Mm. It well, was. Okay, it was a, it was a problem immediately, as it turns. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Whoopsie. what were you saying before you <laughs> so <laughs> dramatically <laughs> muted yourself? <laughs> I said that the lawyer was a pretty man. Mm. Uh, but I've only seen the pictures because I turned off the movie after ten minutes. I is really one you want to be like in for the long run you don't yeah, it, 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 it's, wasn't. yeah you gotta be kind of like okay i'll let this play out in front of me because it is like it's a long movie it's an hour it's two and a half hours um but i also never felt like it was too long you know i think it was just one of the it's like a mood piece you need to just sort of sit in it and let it sort of be yeah. um yeah i liked it a lot um but it's really the only thing i've like actively mm. watched um other than dimension 20 in the past couple of weeks <laughs> What have you been watching, darling? Well, good news is that I, I don't have fatigue anymore, which is nice. After months of being like, I can't watch anything. Uh, the, the healer was the good bad mother, which I talked about uh, when we were on the live stream. But now mm -hmm. I finished it. I cried a lot. <laughs> It's excellent. It, it 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 is wonderful. It's the best. It's heartwarming. It's uh, I I can't I can't I can't with these uh, <laughs> fantastic uh, Korean dramas. I just loved it every single minute of it. Uh, but I was I'm still very upset by the end. Very upset. <laughs> I'm like fuck you all. Uh, but still love you. But fuck you all. Uh, <laughs> it's a very confusing feeling. Uh, and and I I finally watched Abigail, which I've been very much looking yes. forward to. Uh, because I love Ready or Not, and Ready or Not is a fucking gem, and it's the best. And uh, obviously, the same team that made Ready or Not made Abigail, and I was very excited to watch it because the little girl who plays Abigail also played uh, Matilda in the Netflix uh, adaptation. Oh, wow, she's got it. She's um, doing. Uh... Yes. She's got, a range. <laughs> she's, got a, she's got range darling she's got a range uh she's got brilliant range and uh and he was he was he she she was fantastic uh in abigail uh perfect choice uh i loved it 
I don't like it as much as I love Ready or Not. I think they just had so much more fun. Uh, but I love Kevin Durant. I, I will, he, he will come back to this conversation <laughs> later yes, on. Is. But uh, I love how dumb he was <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> it's like, yes, you, you need to be protected. And then he wasn't, unfortunately. I was I very saw upset by that. <laughs> one gift set um, earlier today of somebody running through a house screaming that there was a vampire. And then he yes. closed. That, was that him? Yes. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm okay. Pretty sure that's I, it's like immediately just on vibes. I'm like, that sounds like this, this one gift yeah. that I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, 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 it's been very fun. So I enjoyed that. And I finally, oh, I finally watched Godzilla Minus Fun, uh, which is mm. everything they say about it is true. It's fantastic. I have heard uh, very good things. It's very, very good. Uh, I wanted to punch the main guy in the face multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I wasn't too understanding with him. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like... Didn't feel sorry for him whatsoever. No. Oh, okay. No. No. Stone I was... cold. Get, get told. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I did. I. I was uh, uh, genuinely like uh, very surprised by the end because I thought it got spoiled for me because of fucking TikTok, and mm -hmm. then it turns out it wasn't. So I, I actually had a plot twist without knowing that there was a plot twist. So I, 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 I kind of love it when that happens because when I, before I went to see Parasite, I saw a bit of the movie in a gift set that just by accident um, that I thought was the end of the film. And it's yes. the bit um, where the flood happens, basically. You watch the water yes. coming down and you start seeing it's all flooding down there. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought that was the end of the, the movie. Oh, so when I was sat in the cinema going like, oh, this is kind of boring, actually. Why is this? And then I was like, okay, the movie keeps going. So when you get to, when I got to the actual end of the movie, I was like, this is the best thing I've ever fucking seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. The actual end of that movie rules. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I, I watched three things, three new things. I am very proud of myself. Mm. I also started watching Extraordinary Attorney Wu, uh, which hmm. is very hard for me because I do not like uh, courtroom dramas at all. But uh... This would explain why you don't, you're yeah. not... <laughs> I love courtroom drama. I don't. I it it needs to be incredibly interesting for me to be like, okay, I'm interested in this. Uh, but so far, this is once again such a heartwarming, fantastic story. That, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick. I've, with I've, it. I've not seen it, but Mum watched all of it, and and she was telling me about it as I was watching. It, as she was yes. watching, and it's one of those ones that trends a lot on Tumblr, so I know it's really loved over there as well. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm not dissimilar with it. Is my, my point? There you go. Um, it seems so that's what strange. I'm watching currently. So I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm very, very much back into watching things, which is nice because cool. it's been a long time where I couldn't watch anything and I turned off everything. So, so yeah, after 10 minutes. <laughs> you just, you just need something to like get you back into the, the, yeah. the reminding you, you know, how to get that, which is what it was like for me with, um, with Dead Boy Detectives and then seeing Challenger two days later was kind of yeah. like, oh man, good content is out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Finally. it's important. Finally! <laughs> it's very important. And then, obviously, the most important thing that I watched is what we're going to talk about now. It's Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. It's time to review it. Uh, it's going to be full of spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, fuck off and come back after you watched it and do watch but, it. But like, come back as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> like yes. That's really important. Do come back. Please. You come back. Please watch it. It's... Yes, we're going to get into it. Uh, and we're going to start the first round with the spoiler free uh, mm. overall thoughts uh, about the movie. And we're going to start with Katie this time. Spoiler free. Um, just... Yeah, I'll, I'll say we'll start with my first three points that I wrote down are basically spoiler free. So I'll go, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll read them as they I go. I won't like, you know, you, you know what I mean. Um, yes. First point really just says, I thought it was good. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of sums up a lot of what my, my thoughts are about this movie. Um, it didn't like blow my mind or anything like that, which feels a little bit like a disappointment only because I'd seen challenges like about a week beforehand and that did blow me away. But also not every movie is going to completely, you know, go, wow, this is the best thing ever. Sometimes movies are just really solid. And I think this is a really solid film. Um, it, you know, it's, well, what did I say? Um, yeah, story was self-contained with satisfying arcs for all of, you know, our main players, while also doing a very good job setting up things that are clearly to come, which I'm pleased about. Um, often where I get frustrated with things that are clearly set up is that they feel too much less, like, just set up and they don't have a 
like a self-contained arc. They they forget to be like the beginning, like a, like a, its own thing, as yeah. well as being the rest yes. of the thing. Um, but I thought that this movie is actually quite well self-contained. Um, in you know, it, it has a beginning, middle, and end, but like which feels like such a strange thing to praise. But you have so many it's things true. that don't seem to have like an actual ending at the moment, where it's just like it's just nice to be able to see something where you go. Okay, cool. I'm interested in where this is going, but also that was nice to see. Um, yes. uh, and then all of the visual effects are incredibly impressive. Um, it is a visually stunning movie. Um, it, I mean, I mean, just look, look at these guys. They look amazing. Yeah. Um, and I think it really shows how important it is to have a director who understands um, how uh, video effects going to look once they're done with the entire project. Um, uh, and Wes is definitely one of those people. He I mean, comes from a video effects background. You know, yes, that's that. That is his, you know, bread and butter and all this sort of stuff. And even though he's new to um, performance capture and all that, um, it, it's clear that he's still got enough of an understanding of the medium that he's working in to make something mm. good. Um, yes. Yeah, but those are like those are my my first like. Um, what the word? For spoiler three. Thoughts, Jesus, the Fs and the TH <laughs> sounds are really difficult to say. Um, uh, all of my, I don't have, uh, okay, actually one one more is that I maybe, okay. I thought maybe it it's slow. When, you, when you're watching it, it's kind of a, it is a slow paced movie. But I also don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. I think it was more, I think it's something that actually kind of tested my patience a little bit. Because I also don't think it was badly paced. It just feels like it's not because it's not a very ha action heavy movie. It is one that you kind of needed to. I, I felt like I needed to readjust myself a little bit to be like, this is not a movie that is trying to be like, like, you know, grabbing me immediately and trying to get me to stay pay attention. They're kind of going, we're going to give you this movie at the pace we're going to give it to you at. And it's your job to stay invested kind of a thing which is yeah. nice because i feel like that's so rarely done again nowadays mm. they're trusting an audience to be like sit with me in this we get we're gonna go somewhere um but i did find myself going it, it, you know as it was starting off i was like there's moments of it that feel very um s yeah slow almost like molasses like <laughs> in, in, in bits but i didn't feel like it was dragging it was just sort of like really taking its time <laughs> mm. hmm. um Interesting. but yes i can't i can't quite tell if i think that that's actually a criticism to level against it or whether that's more on me as a uh somebody watching the movie mm -hmm. gotcha. gotcha now i'm done please continue <laughs> <laughs> ian your turn spoiler free i really liked it <laughs> I, I don't i don't think I, I i really really loved it but i really mm. really liked it I mean, that's probably the best way I can put put it. Um, the the trilogy beforehand was uh, really good, um, but I I wasn't like a major fan of it. I actually don't know if I've hundred percent finished the third one. I I can't I can't remember. I can't remember it, and that's problem. And it's definitely a problem to Lily right now because I can see her face. Um, <laughs> But this this was a good re-entry into the franchise for for anyone. You didn't, didn't need to know about mm. James Franco and his and his Caesar because it it told you everything you needed to know. Um, it had heart. It had good. It it, it had heart, and you know, um, good villain, good mm. protagonist, good helper characters. Mm. You know, I, I I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm waiting to be shouted at. Look, like sometimes when she get when she starts making this face, you just have to keep going and then hope that, that by the time you're done, <laughs> she lets it all go. I can't. Ah, <laughs> uh, hold on. I realised I didn't tell Lily they may not have seen the th third one before. Oh. I agreed to do this as well. When did we talked about this years ago? Is the thing yeah. I know we because like you, we, it was I can't I feel like it was a swap that we did, and I can't remember yes. what we, we uh, what I got you to watch. <laughs> I know I did, <laughs> <laughs> but like I, I don't re remember what it was. I feel like it was so long ago. It was when we were still on 
Um, Later, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 it was. Gosh. I mean, was, an awesome. Was, Woody Harrelson was in the third one. Yes, yes. Then I've seen it. I've definitely seen it. Just <laughs> didn't make a master last impression. The third one on me. <laughs> You've got to stop being quiet. This is a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just talking to myself like, don't kill people, don't kill people. It's bad. It's not good. <laughs> anyway, uh, how dare you? First of all, <laughs> uh, the third one is the best fucking movie ever. <laughs> Out of all the Planet of Dave's movies, it's very dark. I love that about it. Andy Serkis gives the fucking best performance ever, ever. And it's just so good. Everything in it is just so good. I realized it because I literally, before I watched Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes on Thursday, I uh, spent Monday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday rewatching Rise, Dawn and War. And uh, as much as I love Rise and Dawn as well, and uh, I, I, I adore them so much, uh, War is just on another level, even from those two. And uh, yeah, I cry on it every single time I watch it. Every single time. Well, all on them, you know, it's like war has, has a very special place in my heart and I still fucking hate them for what they did to Caesar. <laughs> fucking hate you guys. Anyway, uh, <laughs> because he deserved <laughs> happiness and freedom and all that. <laughs> what the fuck? Right, anyway. I, I went through our old episodes to figure out what we decided to swap in, in talking about. We talked about the West Wing. I watched all of the all oh, of yes. the, the, the eighth movies and then afterwards we talked about the West Wing. <laughs> to be the West Wing at the yes. time. Still love the West even... Wing. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I was, it was like, because it, it's been three years since yes. I watched them. So my memory of them is, is slightly hazy. Um, but I do remember that I enjoyed them a lot. But I don't, but my point was that more that I don't remember exactly where I like ranked them in terms of which ones I liked the best. I do remember thinking that they were excellent movies though. <laughs> okay, good, good. Uh, anyway. She's just uh, like she wasn't there for the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> if you would have said something bad, I would remember. Yeah, that's for sure. No, we. I was very. I remember being very positive about it. Um, yeah, I just yeah. also know that this is definitely a thing that you love more than I. I do. Mm, yes, I never thought I would because I don't like the previous Planet of the movies at all. Mm, uh, so I love. Mm -hmm. They sucked. They weren't the previous yeah, ones. Yeah, I don't like them at all. Uh, I fucking love these. I uh, always say this. I put it in my article, coming soon on Cartoon, uh, and I will uh, say it here as well. Uh, there are very few perfect trilogies. That's one of them. And no, I don't take any questions. <laughs> <laughs> and also, no, you're not right if you're saying it's not so like. Shut up. <laughs> I fucking love these movies. That's the main point. So I was very, 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 very nervous with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes because obviously, um, without spoilers, there's a big Andy Serkis sized hole in the whole thing still for me. Uh, despite thinking that everyone was, almost everyone, uh, uh, was fucking great and in. We're going to get into that part later on in the spoiler part. Um, and uh, and yeah, it, 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 uh, I, I am very glad to report that I was wrong. Uh, Wes Bolt did uh, fantastic. Uh, and I'm saying this uh, as someone who enjoyed the Maze Runner adaptions, but mm -hmm. I still think that they are like not as good as they could have been. Um, but he did a good job uh, with them and, and he did an excellent job with this. Uh, I put aside my worries basically after the first main event happens in, in the movie. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, it's, it was very good. I don't love it as much as I loved them, uh, but I really, really, really liked it. And it has so much potential. Mm. Uh, and I am so glad uh, that it, because the biggest worry was like, they're going to just plummet this franchise to the ground mm. and it's going to become awful. It's not, it's not. I'm very glad to report that it, it has all the heart uh, and everything. And they improved on things. I will also say this uh, very quickly before we get into the spoiler part, uh, that they did improve on things. And I don't just mean the visuals because they were already fucking per perfect there. But like here, it, it felt like Avatar level uh, visuals uh, a lot of times. Mm. So yeah, that's the spoiler free part. And now... And now if you haven't seen the film, this is where you go away, watch it, and yes. then you come back. 
and watch most it. important part of the whole thing is that you do come back come back come back and listen to us because we were very smart and there's a crazy person here me <laughs> i was like that could be any of us <laughs> I was I was a little bit worried it was me first. Yeah, for a no, second. no, it, it's me. Okay. I see. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, all right, let's get into the spoilers. All right, spoiler toads. Mm. Uh, let's get the negative stuff out of the way. The things that you didn't like in the movie, and uh, this time we're gonna start with Ian. What were the things that you didn't like? Freya Allen. <laughs> Oh, um, I, yeah. I really, I really, no. <laughs> I just, I feel like it would be very harsh. <laughs> I'm with Ian. I, I, I mean, uh, the character is terrible anyway. Like, well, as this a, is as, the and thing I, I just, thought. And I... she's meant to be, she's meant to be, and I know yes, that, but she's... I, I have, I'm going to be really harsh here, so don't shout at me. I have real doubts whether Freya Allen, Freya Allen is actually a good actor. I, I say this on a, on a couple of levels. This she like the American accent. She was made to have an American accent because it didn't make sense for her not to have an American accent. She was born into an American society, so mm, it made, yes. made sense. It wasn't very good though. Um, Better than I was expecting it to be. <laughs> but, but you like The Witcher as well, so like you know. I do like The Witcher. I stand <laughs> yeah. by that. She's not that great in The Witcher. I'm, no. I'm not. Not gonna lie, it's quite awful in that. And, anyway, yes. And I watched a horror film in between those called Baghead, and she was pretty terrible in that as well. <laughs> this is the so I think true. this is the only other thing I've seen in her in. So I, I, you know, um, so so Freya Allen in 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 general was was bad, but even the way that they they portrayed the character was was not great as well. A anyone could see from a mile off that she wasn't this normal echo she had normal clothes on she wasn't wearing yeah. fig leaves i don't but... think that that was you know meant to be i feel like anybody paying attention could see that that was you know i feel like that that was an intentional thing is all i'm saying it's not trying to hide the fact she, by si staying silent but she wasn't Shh. trying to hide the fact because yeah she had but nobody said anything on. about it so it's like you know it's not like they have enough um interaction with these people to be like to to you know put two and two together we as an audience understand that entirely but i i don't see I how for, you know sorry I, I get that for noah's tribe like because noah's tribe don't don't converse with echoes mm. as they call them but anyone who would have normal contact with normal echoes like um like the king's tribe yeah, but I think that they did know that she was smart. I think that was the whole point of them trying to get her. Yeah, yeah. but the fact that she is in like normal clothes and she doesn't. Oh, I see your point. Dog. Okay, yeah, no, it, uh, yeah. It stands That's... out like a sore thumb. She can't. She couldn't like. I don't know. Hide with within a pack of, or or yeah. or, or anything. Mm. It it didn't really make sense that she, I know for like dignity sake she. She would want to wear normal clothes if she was more smarter than she than the rest of them, but it just didn't make a lot of sense if she was trying to keep a low profile that she wasn't blending in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I understand the point. I don't entirely. Eat. I feel like it, it's it's a stretch to think they're thinking that hard about it. <laughs> maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But like you know. Uh... I just didn't like her at all. I didn't like her as an actor. I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with Ian. Like, I, she did nothing for me again. Like, other than, like, I hated the character because of the characteristics of the character. Yeah, the character uh, is is well uh, de not debatable. I can. It's one of those things where I'm very obviously seeing a character arc being set up. So I'm like, okay, I can see, I can see where this is going. You know. <laughs> I don't want her to come back for the next ones. Like, oh, she's I, absolutely I, I... coming back. She's like the yeah. other face of the franchise. <laughs> oh, fuck no. Uh, I, I wrote to Ian that I, I really, really hope that they're going to keep their good, <laughs> that really good trend of like having actors who are portraying humans for one movie only because it's like... Ugh. I think it's too no. much. It's, I think it's too obvious that they're narrative foils of each other for her to not come back again. Ugh. Fuck. 
she's got more of a character up set up for the next two movies than I think Noah does. Like a really yeah. obvious one. Nah, I don't agree. No. Yeah. I didn't I didn't like I mean, her. I mean like that. She doesn't made, matter if you didn't like her or, like... or not. I think that there's there's a very clear character arc set up for her. Because um, she's representative yeah. of, of a certain um uh viewpoint, um, human viewpoint. Uh, that that has a place to start from, but a place where she's probably going to change her mind by the end of it. And and she's immune to the the virus, so it, like to have more people out in the world, you'd have to find more immune people in that. It's unfortunate, but I, like I don't I don't see a way around it. She's going to be killed by an ape off screen. <laughs> off screen, you know she's dead back. then. <laughs> <laughs> the magic of happening it off screen. I just believe in that now. I don't care. <laughs> I, don't, I, I like, I, I really like, she was worse than the colonel or, or even the fucking asshole in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes who I fucking hated. You know, his dad was so satisfying. Uh, but uh, because she basically, like everything, everything Proxima said about humans, she represented that yes like, that is you... de decidedly her, her point in the narrative <laughs> yes she's she's like uh, uh she's playing them she is lying through her three teeth uh she doesn't mind teeth. genocide yes uh, uh uh she doesn't mind genocide i was i was like you better die now bitch <laughs> At the end, I was like, you fucking asshole, how dare you push that fucking button? Uh, anyway, I didn't like her at all. Not just as the character itself, which was the whole point, because I'm like, if you didn't understand it through three movies that the apes have nothing to do with the virus other than being used as test animals. And uh... I've got a point on this, actually, but I'll, I'll let you continue as you go, because it's, it's actually part of why I, I, what I really like about the movie, what it is setting up um, uh, in terms of thematics. Um, which is my major um, props to this film is that there's a lot of really good like building of themes going on. But continue. Yes. ASE 13 was developed by humans. Uh, they tested it on chimpanzees. Uh, it's not the apes' fault uh, that it turned out how it turned out. Uh, so yeah, it's the humans' fault, and blaming the apes is a very human thing to do because we cannot admit if we are in the wrong at all. Um, so yeah, uh, I didn't like her i didn't like her acting uh she if if henry cavill is the one-faced actor for me where i just can't stand him at all because i don't think he's a good actor that's very well in, in in the women section uh i don't i don't like her i hate that we have a poster where uh she is standing in front of all the apes <laughs> that she's in the middle and i'm like ah. <laughs> uh anyway uh other negative things ian or can I just, I want to just, because I don't have anything to really combat that with other than I actually thought she did a great job considering she's one of the only human people that we really see in the entire movie. So, but that's really all I have to say on it. I'm fundamentally, I disagree. That's kind of it. <laughs> okay. William Agent Macy was much better and uh, she was a bitch to him as well. Well, yeah, she's a bad guy. It's, it's just what an antagonist is meant to do. <laughs> she's awful. Uh, anyway, Ian? Any other negative things that you didn't like? Um, not, Let's get it out of the way. No, 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 not main no. ones. No, the, no. All, all my, all my things were little nitpicky. Okay, Katie, any? I don't really have a whole lot of like. I think my major like anything it, that I felt was like actively negative was that sense of slowness that came from watching the movie. Where mm. there were times where I was kind of like, I I had that instinct of like, could we pick this up a little bit? Because like, <laughs> I was like, I just want something more to happen. Or it, it, it's like it doesn't need to be that much quicker, but it's like if we could get to the next thing a little bit faster, I'd be a little happier. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it, but I also didn't. Again, I think that might be just a thing on my part where I, I it's a, it was a test of, of patience in places because I don't necessarily think taking time in a movie is a bad, um, is a bad thing. Um, mm. Yeah, um, all of my, all of my, most of my points are actually, I've, I've got a lot of really positive things to say about. Um, okay. About all the thematic stuff, which which will lead into um, yes, other bits yes, and pieces yes. later. But did you have anything other? 
that you because I think we've already covered the other <laughs> stuff <laughs> before you start rehashing points. <laughs> no, I'm not going to rehash points. I'm going to say that I disagree with you. I think for me, especially the beginning of the film uh, uh, with the whole tribe thing. And oh, I like that uh, a lot. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I love Noah's journey. I love that they didn't rush it and uh, they actually let him go through things and mm. discover things and oh, how much I love Raka is beyond oh, words. Yeah, I oh, so much, so much love for for Raka, and and I I. This is gonna go to the good part, so I'm not gonna get into it. We're, we're gonna come back to Raka and and mm. what he represents and why I love this mm. movie so much. <laughs> uh, but uh, eh, other negative stuff, I would say is. Not much, really. I, I mm. didn't really have many problems with they, it. I honest. think this is the thing with the movie is that even though it wasn't like, you know, mind blowing in it, I think it's actually very subtle in the things that are very good yeah. about it. I think it's it's got a really strong base to it, which means mm. that when you kind of dig into it a bit more, it's like, oh, actually, there's a real there's a lot of gold in this, <laughs> to be yeah. honest. That's not like immediately obvious. Yeah. I think the only like weird thing about it, and that's more like weird, I would say, like, mm. I, I don't know if it makes much sense. I read somewhere because in the movie, it says that many generations after Caesar, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in articles, it says we are 300 years after Caesar's uh, death. Yeah. And uh, what doesn't really make sense to me is that they obviously, uh, you know, get to a point of culture where they can build stuff and they can train animals and, and whatever. It just feels a bit too slow that they are still here. And the fact that because it is in the movie that they can't read, which was something that Maurice, for example, actively learned how to do uh, in the previous three. Uh, Maurice was the orangutan, uh, the right hand of Caesar, basically. Uh, like, I, if that is the clan of apes that we are going with, and, you know, all these generations came from them, I, I don't know how they got, like, how they lost the ability to read, for example. Like, it, that part was a bit weird. Like you would think that it's like a common thing. I don't know. I think it, I think it, it, the the setup is that this this particular clan was extremely isolationist. Um, that they yeah. have and and you know at a certain point if if the need to read is not necessary to your, it might have been born out of 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 a, a you know a certain clan that was from an entirely different place to where all the other apes that we saw from the original yeah, trilogy were yeah. from. So maybe they, their you know society built up in a slightly different way. And if you don't have a necessarily have a need to learn to read, then especially if your you know your your society is based on oral tradition and like and all that sort of stuff, um, then then why would you develop the need to write things down? Um, well, you also have to remember. We took a very, as a, you know, as a human species, we took a very long time to learn how to start yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to write and all of these bits and pieces. I think that came about the more that, you know, society grew in a space. So if you're in that small of a space, I think it does. I, I, I do. I see. I see the it, it was I think it's more of a thematic um, framing rather than a logical one. If, if that makes sense. Sometimes there are things that work more for theme um, than they do for, for literal. Yeah. I think I have a theory about it. Mm, uh, tell me. Uh, I think one one of the themes of, about this is how um, doctrine can be twisted for your own personal gain, yes. right? Mm. Um, and uh, one of Proximus is, is, is apes together, together strong and echoes are shit, basically. Mm. Kill them all. Um, so I, I, over generations, people may may have start, stopped specifically reading because they want anything purged from the the echo uh, time. Um, that that Maybe. was my that was my theory anyway. It, that actually leans into the point I was going to make. Um, that's the wrong way. Let's Let, get into the good stuff then. This is, yeah, we we're, we're, we're well. getting into the good stuff. I I I like the fact this movie has a lot of theming around. Um, knowledge essentially and losing knowledge over time and having that knowledge twisted by people who have their own um uh, uh goals and um machinations and all of those 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 types of words that i'm, I'm circling around the one i actually wanted and i can't find it um 
in that uh, and to that point i think what may represents is a very human centric version of that wherein um the the I, who the I don't, because we don't know much about them yet, which I think is where this set up for the rest of them is going. It, it's very possible that certain humans early on got rid of that knowledge so that they can move on to a, a, a um, you know, to move in a very singular direction. It's propaganda. It's the way that propaganda works. We we tell a story to suit our own needs, and then we propagate that story to the people, especially if they've been listening, living in this like, um, you know, bunker under the earth. You yeah. get a certain version of events that you come up with, um, and that, and yeah, it's it, exactly in the way that it, humans do. We victimized ourselves and went, well, everything was taken from us, so we must take it back again. Nuance gets lost throughout history when we don't keep all of the information to be able to like respond further onwards, you know. Um, so it, I I can see very I mean it's it's clearly we're in a space of one set of people has been told a very specific thing and one set of people has been told a very a different set of things, and this whole trilogy, as far as I can tell, is going to be about that redissemination of um, uh, information of like finding mm -hmm. um, yeah. what our lost history was and understanding that everything is more nuanced than we've ever had um, before. So I think that at a certain point she's going to you know because i think as she's already been tested on like her perception of how things are meant to be um and i think that that's just going to be a common theme throughout throughout the rest of it and like vice versa we've got what is essentially the actual reincarnation of caesar in noah who's going to be relearning and then becoming you know the new sort of face of this and i don't even think he's going to necessarily become like you know the reincarnation of Jesus in that kind of a sense. Yeah. He'll do something different because otherwise you're just telling the same story twice. Um, but it, it will be more about how to reorient it um, and, you know, how, how we try to learn from where we've actually come from as opposed to where um, we've been told that we we come from. And maybe even a little bit about like the danger of having that knowledge and what that means because you can't go back to a state of ignorance at, at, a, at that point. You can't go back to pretending that things are, are, are the way that they have been. Yes. Um, which I think that this movie does very well in all of those bits and places. I, I really like the way that, um, uh, yeah, legacy being a huge theme, both you know, on a macro and a, you know, uh, sorry, a macro and a micro scale, um, in that there's like the legacy of Caesar that has been warped and manipulated by um, Proximus and 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 all the and and his his people, but also the legacy that he that Noah then starts to take up in becoming, you know, his father's son and 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 like learning how to um, take care of son and and have and bond in that way and and all this sort of stuff. Um, another thing I really like about this movie um, is that there's like a there's there's and I don't know maybe this is a bit of a stretch, but there's a almost I think to that point of legacy and story and everything like that that's kind of been built up there's almost a f sort of mythological or fairy tale esque um uh slant to the whole thing in mm. a lot of the the visuals and stuff like that like the whole thing with like um you know going doing the climb and finding the eggs and bonding with them that felt almost it was almost like Lord, no, not Lord of the Rings, Lion King esque, uh, in that like this is a this is somebody who has to come you know rise to an occasion and become like a king figure, um, but then there's also just like the literal like visual of him standing at the mouth of that tunnel, and leaving the safe space to go off into the wider yeah, yeah, yeah. world, um, yeah. which felt a little bit Orpheus esque to me of like I'm going to hell and I'm going to go rescue the people that I care about. Um, yes. It's not in, in, you know, play out the entirety of that way by the end of it, but like it, the, that was what was invoked to me when, when I saw it. And then at the end, having Proximus be pecked to death by birds was a little bit like almost Prometheus esque. Um, oh yeah. Uh, which I, I, yeah, just like those little bits and pieces. Where I was like, that's fun. I really like that as a narrative, like because you know I've I've, I've got a real thing for anything narrative that kind of goes. Um, well, we're going to tell a story about like that's got story elements in it, so we're really going to hammer in on that as a like a, a theme and let that kind of permeate because I think that's always really strong. Um, but those were like my main 
um, bits and pieces. Yeah, the emphasis on time and losing touch with the past and uh, how these things can be corrupted, where we um, come from informs where we go, losing that corrupts the path and dooms us to repeating the path that we had seen previously. Um, yeah. Which, yeah, it feels like the setup for where we go next. Oh, I yeah. hope that they do something slightly different to what I'm expecting with it, because otherwise we are kind of a little bit rehashing old ground. Um, I don't think we will, because um, um, uh, Noah is already very different from season. Yes, he's a very different um, character, but it, it then becomes like, well, now he's got this knowledge, what is he going to do with it? Which is a fun question to, to pose. Oh, yeah. So far, he is doing the opposite because you know one of caesar's teaching is apes don't kill apes uh, whoa, 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 that's whoa. but he didn't he did he didn't he killed he didn't kill kill anyone <laughs> he didn't kill anyone the birds did that. the birds did and he trapped the, the gorilla and so that's that it, as well. he, but but for, but he, he didn't he didn't trap him he lured him into a place where he trapped himself that he, he specifically yeah but the, you know what if you if... liked about it was that he's following caesar's teachings in a way it, like but yeah if caesar that, the... would have been standing there he would have saved the gorilla no but that is i see what ian's point because it, it's like he's heard it, it it's it's much like everything else that's happened in it he's yeah. heard what the lesson is that apes don't kill other apes and he's gone okay but I can do this because I'm not actually killing him. I'm just leading him to a place where he's being killed by something because of my actions. And those two things are not connecting for him. Like mm -hmm. he, he's able to, like, there's like a, an element of like, I'm, I'm justifying my, myself, um, which is exactly what everybody else has been doing with Caesar. Yeah, he, um, he, do, he doesn't actually go ahead and, and save the apes that are trying to kill him, but he doesn't physically kill them himself. <sighs> <laughs> I'm not Fine. saying I'm not saying I don't think we're either of us are saying that like he did like his actions did kill both of those apes. Yes. Those apes. He's, There's he's no, no Caesar. He's, he is he, not it's Caesar. not that's he's not, not Caesar. what anybody is saying. But from like an internal character perspective, it's very interesting to see somebody take uh, an idea and try to do the right thing with it, but also mm -hmm. in terms of the circumstances, is still willing to do the adjacent. Um yeah. Because it's interpretation it's like... of scripture type stuff. Gossamer's yeah. took it one way. Yeah. And Noah's taken it a different way. Well, no one's hearing the real the thing, obviously. The original said. No. Yeah. I mean because he's Rafa hearing is... he's hearing the real thing, but like he he's still hearing the real thing with centuries worth of time between those. Mm -hmm. If he was hearing it from Caesar himself, he'd have a sense of like, you know, mm -hmm. nuance and where that comes from and and, and 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 drive to a very specific set of like acting. But because he's not, you know, you, there's only there's a, the, you get so far and people are still gonna interpret in the way that they are it, it, within the circumstances that they live in. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's good uh, storytelling. Is all I'm it is very good storytelling. I uh, loved how uh, the the because obviously when uh, they came to the clown and 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 then they started to uh, uh, for Caesar for Caesar saying that I was like I was like oh fuck Ex <laughs> excuse me I know. <laughs> but, what the fuck? Like, I was properly mad. Like, mm. this is not what Caesar would do. Like, you know, I obviously knew that uh, Kevin Durant's uh, character is called Proximus Caesar. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. In proximity but like, I was, too, which is fun. Yes, uh, which, which, which was like, okay, may maybe it's, it's like they're, they're talking about him. And then I'm glad that they like, okay, this was my other point that was like a bit negative. Uh, they deepened it but also didn't really uh for mm. me like it wasn't enough for me to be like okay i see what's happening here because i think rocka was so clearly the voice of keeping caesar's yeah. real legacy uh alive and my god when like the first thing i saw was the necklace because it is obviously mm. the necklace of yeah. uh the window that um uh, you know caesar uh, grew up uh, around and looked out of mm. uh, into the world uh and then he later used it everywhere basically it became his symbol and it's still around thankfully i was so happy so relieved it, it, it comes back again uh, when we get to proximus's place and uh, i was kind of waiting for like a bit more of a talk 
of like you know because there is like you know uh, uh proximus uh, brings up the whole uh apes together strong uh which is big for caesar but like did it really get into like you know how he got to this knowledge like where did he learn about caesar was there mm. another ape that uh, told him the story and obviously told a completely different story that the, you know that's the impression i got is that it was a it was an oral t tradition thing that had been warped over time because yeah. by because because they nobody's been writing anything down and all they have is the books from the previous yeah. time but nobody actually wrote down specifically all the things that caesar mm -hmm. or if they did that has been lost yes right um yeah. i think it, it is that sense of like he couldn't know everything because otherwise that kind of negates the point of the, I, the... Yeah, yeah yeah that's like you know i i got the sense of it but like mm -hmm. it felt a bit like they left it a bit empty of like mm. why is this big obsession with caesar why caesar like you know he That's mentions that because he was our first leader and whatnot but i was like he's ape jesus okay. he is ape jesus he is ape jesus <laughs> obviously but like i was like okay but like you know like where where did you got the info is there like because if there are apes like rocker who are trying to spread you know what caesar was doing and trying to keep his legacy alive where are the apes that are like you know still talking about caesar but like completely turning it over um mm -hmm. in a way and what or was it proximus that was like heard the stories like the real stories maybe from raka who knows mm -hmm. and then he was like hmm, wait a minute maybe i can change this so i can be the fucking king and whatever because that's like yeah. he yeah. is raka is kind of what would have happened if Koba would have succeeded in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? Because that would have been Koba yeah. being like, I'm gonna kill the innocent, I'm the king, I'm fucking great, Caesar can go fuck off. Um, so, you know, it's it's like, there's like, I would have liked to know, like, what, where did that, I, I felt like that Proximus deserved more uh, time mm. uh, on the screen. Mm. And, and, you know, because I love the scene uh, where he invited Noah and obviously, um me and uh William H. Missy whose name I forgot the movie. Um I'm looking at it here. Uh, let me see if I can get this right. Trevathan? Trevathan. Trevathan? Trevathan? Uh, I, I thought I thought it was it's not a, but it's, with Trevor at the start. So it, it's a it's a strange it is a strange name. It's one of those ones where I heard I went sorry. <laughs> so yes. Yeah, so, it's clearly got hang on. I'm gonna yeah. see if I can find I'm out what sure the... it's Trevathan. Yeah. Jonathan, but with Trevor. At the start. Mm. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I'm more curious about like where the name comes from. Yeah. Um, but all that's coming up is a farm. Maybe it comes from a farm. Uh <laughs> it's a surname. There okay. You go. There you go. Uh, I love that scene. I I think it showed like who Proximus is a little bit. I don't think it was enough. So if if these movies had a problem with human characters because mm -hmm. the their weak point was definitely how they set up great human characters and then they didn't do anything with them basically mm. like they, were, they they basically did like there are clear good guys in this story and there are clear bad guys in this story and it's always the between the humans because uh, in the first one it's obviously james franco is the good guy it's will uh, uh and then you know the the big ceo is the bad guy mm -hmm. okay and and there's no in between uh with them and then in 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 dawn of the planet of the apes uh, uh we have uh that fucking asshole <laughs> oh, i hate that guy uh we have gary oldman who's also like he's kind of a bad guy he was the only like morally gray character basically and then then you know we we have the other side and then in in um in war for the planet of the apes we we have the colonel who's, who's clearly the bad guy and he's awful and whatnot and then we have nova who, who's the the counterpart of it all and uh and also the first like you know look into what happens to humans with with the new uh virus uh spreading around uh and 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 it it felt like that in this movie they got the human characters right with William H Macy uh, and Freya Allen uh, in characters and and they had death and whatever and then it felt like that they got Noah right they got all the side characters right because um, I loved uh, Love everyone Suna and um, Attire Anaya Anaya Anaya, that's Anaya, it, sorry. Anaya, Anaya Anaya yeah so sweet. yes Lo love them they they were great and it felt like that Proximus fell. A tiny bit short, and the only thing that saves him is that Kevin Durant loves, 
loves the role so much. Mm -hmm. I kept watching interviews with him and he's the best. <laughs> like, honestly, I love his enthusiasm <laughs> about the whole thing. And I, I feel like that Proximus needed more. That's the main thing. I think like, that's a I, fair um, yeah. assessment. That was more there. That, that's what I saw that uh, we didn't we didn't get to see, unfortunately. Yeah, no, I can I can I can see what you mean there. Um, I think. Um, yeah, it 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 is. Oh, I had a point, and it's it, it and I'm trying to I'm struggling to find it again. Um, <laughs> I do I I see I very much see I do I very much see your point. Um. Yeah. The gorilla got more more screen time than than Proximus. Speaking of that gorilla, um, it is played by a, a gentleman named um Eka Darville. Yes. Oh, was yeah. in Jessica, Jessica Jones. Jones. I didn't realize it was him. I was like, <laughs> 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 sorry. <laughs> Revelation. Which is just, I mean, it, it goes to show you what um uh uh. uh using performance capture does um yeah it's like uh, he's you know he's a very he's a tall but you know skinny guy he's not mm. gorilla sized <laughs> put it that way um he made it gorilla so I, I really I really i wasn't expecting that at all but he was one of my favorite parts of jessica jones it was really it's fun to see him, him in, in 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 such a and, different space and you know owen teague plays uh noah and owen teague is in it he he played patrick uh, and I really enjoyed him there, even though he got really little time, uh, especially in the first one. And then in the second one, he came back as a dead Patrick, <laughs> which was like, okay, uh, he, he did great. But like, I think this is where he truly shines. Uh, I I love how different Noah was from Caesar from the get go. Like there are definitely similarities, like the love for uh, his own uh, is, is definitely there. Uh, but then he's he's so different. He's, he's it's it's player. really it is a really um very much a positive for the movie to be able to take somebody who um is going to be fulfilling a very similar role but show how different that they can be in, in terms of like yeah. here there are a lot of tenants that are very clearly very similar but like this is a different person like it's very yeah. different like yeah, a, a very very different guy um I like the fact that, that there's a lot of like setup for him in, in, during that opening part of him going to get the the um the egg um that uh i it, it, uh, from somebody you know who studied how to put narrative together feels very like by the book but it is also by the book done with a lot of proficiency you know yeah. kind of it, it sets up that he's actually you know quite resourceful and, and and good at this um he's there's an element of selflessness to him but he's also a risk taker um uh and um but isn't like He's not actively letting anybody down, you know. It's not like he's not like he's a fuck up. It's just that he hasn't quite gotten to the place where he can rise to the occasion nearly as yeah. much. Um, yeah. Which, it, and it's just I I appreciate when that's done mm. well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Ian, we we talked a lot, so it's your yes. turn. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, and there's a couple of things that like, and and I'm pretty sure we're gonna go to Raka. Raka, Raka is like everyone's favorite. But yes. I want to just shout out a couple of, of quick things that I really liked. Um, going back to the the distribution of information over time and how that that warped, I I, I only know this because I saw this really subtle thing and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Um, at the start in Caesar's funeral, when they did the apes together strong um, thing, and then they do this mm. yeah and but then in when yeah like the, I mean, yeah it, it, the stone cold steve austin above the head yeah. um and then during proximus is the the hand movements sort of got really close together and and it changed over mm. time um and i just thought the just the it just a really small detail which shows mm. how how it warps um over time which i really liked um, and the other thing that I really want to shout out is how they didn't make Anaya an asshole. And because uh, I, I, mm, I yeah, hope to yeah. God he wasn't yes. going to be the turncoat weasel yeah. that I thought he was going to be at the start because he looked yep. like a turncoat weasel. <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. just scared. That's yeah. really, which is just nice to see. He 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 was scared, and then he turned around and went. Actually, 
I'm going to be brave about it. Yes. Um, which was exactly yeah. what he did at the beginning as well. Funnily enough. Yeah. That's 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 again. That's a nice. That's a really good piece of little like consistency. Consistency yeah. and foreshadowing in in many ways. Um, yeah. That's, those oh, was, are oh, two really yeah. good bits of. Uh, those those are two good details actually. Yeah. I'm gonna we... say this quickly. And then she doesn't say it quickly I, ever. <laughs> like, sorry. Uh, no, because I think back on it and I'm like, because I, I literally watched War for the Planet of the Apes, uh, you know, the, the day before. Mm -hmm. uh, I obviously cried my eyes out the second yeah. Caesar lumps and, and he's gone and I'm like... <laughs> do, do you know, it's really oh. funny. After you saw the movie when you went, oh, I've, I cried about four times, I was in the movie theatre going, that was one, that was probably <laughs> another. <laughs> So like Caesar's funeral turned up, I was like, that was definitely yeah, the definitely last the one. one. Yeah. Um, uh, the sacking of the village, I, pro I figured it was probably the second. Um, yeah. Oh, what was the? Uh, the there were the two near the. Uh, the I mean, the 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 drowning of the apes. Probably, I wouldn't be surprised if that got you. Um, there was another one though that I know I noted at the time, and I don't remember what it was now. <laughs> Ian knows. I do know, but I've forgotten. You know. No, ah, there you go. Look for it because I, I told the M. I cried there. But like, it, 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 there were like literally, I could see moments in it where I was like, she definitely cried at that. She yeah. definitely <laughs> cried at that. <laughs> uh, the, the joke was the end when the bitch survived. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't think that that was like. <laughs> that wasn't that was one the of joke. <laughs> That was it, the joke. <laughs> it was the joke one. It was when uh, his dad's eagle came to him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was probably yes. No, you're right. Yeah, that was that was the the other one because yeah. 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 I did tear up a little bit for William H Macy, but mostly because I was angry with that bitch, uh, <laughs> because William H Macy did not deserve that. Anyway, uh, yes, at the beginning, that opening, I didn't expect mm -hmm. that they're gonna start the movie like that. Yeah. I was like, when I realized what's happening, I was like. <laughs> Which I thought was, which is yeah. really interesting to me afterwards when you were like, there's still an Andy Circus sized hole in the middle of it. You did not say a Caesar sized hole in the middle of it. <laughs> Caesar's, technically speaking, in it's, the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's an Andy Circus. Because that's that's like the the main altogether point of, of what I think of this movie mm. is that I liked it a, a lot. A lot like it's it's a very good it's it's i love the storytelling in it i love the characters i i love a lot of things about it but it's it's like i can grab what's missing and that's like as much as i love what uh, the actors who actually did the mocap uh, do but mm. like andy circus is such a big part <laughs> of this franchise and he was obviously helping and he was an advisor for the whole thing. yeah i, I saw shows... his name in in the, in the yeah. credits yeah, and it shows, and 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 you know, I I just recently sent over an interview where he's like, you know, that's the good thing about mocap because you can play anyone, and I'm like, I'm just gonna leave that, just I'm just gonna believe that this is confirmation that he's coming back for Planet of the Apes as another character because I'm the Lulu, <laughs> but like, I do want to believe that I. I'm not gonna say it would improve the movie a lot because it's it's already very good, but I I think it would mean so much if he would come back as a different character mm. for me that's like that's i know i see it I, and i see it but my thought is because i feel like you can't bring him back unless he's playing somebody of importance no no, no, no. um but then the question becomes because we all know he we would all know immediately right uh, that you know he that he'd turn up and he'd be like that's andy circus yeah. who played caesar so he'd have to have some kind of very like, different. Inten very. Uh, very different, but also but like intense narrative connection to who Caesar was or like how that has shifted, right? Um so like he could either be somebody who actually embodies who you know, maybe brings information about who uh, Caesar actually was, or is actively a major antagonist uh and does the exact opposite of that thing. But I don't think yeah. you can have some him just turn up as like a cameo piece. No, no. Definitely not. Like, like I, I couldn't imagine that. I also, like, it would really hurt if it would be like the bad guy. <laughs> like, 
like <laughs> be really fun book. though <laughs> i know i know but it, it would hurt my soul <laughs> the be, human bad be... guy the human bad i was also guy. thinking oh! you, like he yes. could just be like you could just see sound. him like yeah. he could be representing mm. a very like a like a contingent of these humans who maybe even like spread that pop propaganda that would be really like that would oh, be a God, great yeah. role for him to play especially yeah. as like because of the way that this whole thing has been, is you could put him as like a preacher. I think that could be really interesting, because um, uh, like you want if you were gonna like point people in a really specific direction, um, and there's a space of like science um, and, and all that sort of stuff. If he could play a place of faith, but like almost like like scientific faith in like a really pointed way in that yeah. kind of like. Um, uh, evangelical. Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? When you're like really over the top, but like won't hear it. Yeah, like evangelistic, um, like scientific way, or or like just like really human first. That could be a really fun um, position mm -hmm. for him to hold it in, in. In in. But like you don't know. We don't know where it's gonna go. I don't know what. I don't know what plans that Wes has got, but. He's clearly I have a got theory me. on that. <laughs> I have a theory on that, but uh, first of all, like you know, I stopped. So Ian, <laughs> it's still you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, the only thing that I want to talk about that now is is Raka, because Raka's amazing. Raka's the best. I don't. I want to make sure that we do, we give enough time to Raka. <laughs> <laughs> I am fully on like high levels of copium, where I'm like, he's not dead. He he's got out dead. of that. He he's got out of that river. <laughs> he he washed dead. up somewhere down the he's road, and he's gonna come back. Uh, that's yes. that's where I'm at right now. I was like, I, we I didn't saw, see his body. I saw reports that at the end of the credits, there's like a a, a roar, and it's Racker's roar. I had a roar. I just thought that that was just a thing that they shoved in. I didn't. I don't know if you could like. It was Racker. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll I'll find that flame. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Raka has to live. Like you know, it would be so unfair, especially sacrificing himself for that. Yeah. Well, you know, he was living by Caesar's. I know creed. Mm -hmm. I know, which means that he is the purest <laughs> person in the MT. That this is this is why he's yeah. the purest person in the, in the movie. <laughs> I know. I would be a bad ape. I would be like, ah, bitch, no. <laughs> You die, I live. <laughs> I I do like what it's setting up, though. I really like the 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 idea of that sort of tension, basically, of like, uh, you know, the way that people will go to ground for the other people around them, but like have to basically live a I, like. I think she's already gotten to a point where she's like, my sense of who I am as a person is being challenged, and I've had to double down on it. But I don't think it's going to survive that either. Either she really does double down and she becomes like a yeah. really heavy main antagonist. But I don't think we're doing that way. I, I think it will be going in the opposite direction of her I learning. Wish they like, would. Anyway, yes. <laughs> I think it will go in the opposite direction because I think yeah, I think it's too obvious that those two are narrative foils of each other because they represent the places that they come from essentially. Um, yeah. Mm. Raka. We want to talk about Raka, not yes. that bitch. Yes. Sorry. Raka is the best. Uh, Raka is great. Raka. I love Raka. I love the fact that we get a bit of comedy yes. from him yeah. within within the he movie. And then, yes, and, and like I said, he does represent a purity um, of, you know, it, as much as we can do um, in terms of what Caesar actually did want and and leave it, living by that example. Yes, um, yes, yes. Which yes. Is, it does make the fact that he, what, what happened to him very poetic within within the narrative yeah. and could say something yeah. about where we're going from here on out um yeah. but i don't know even Racker, even Racker didn't know exactly what mm. he, he he had twisted some things uh, about his teaching as well not on purpose just mm. because over just time it's been time. Lost. yeah so, so yeah i i, I loved Racker. just I, the, I, yeah let me just good. leave that there for a minute like, Racker, we love him yeah. yes that's Shout it. out That's to um, Peter Macon, whose name, who, who's the gentleman who played played him. Yes, yes, obviously. Uh, all right, let's wrap it up. Uh, I'm going to say know, my theory. Yes, I just very quickly. It's a very small thing, but it is quite funny because I've had the. Um, I've literally looking at the cast of, of Planet of the Apes on on mm -hmm. Google here, just so I had it available. But I've got it on Google, and the first thing that comes up is the IMDb page. <laughs> I just want to read the the little setup thing that it says here, where it says a young woman, a young human woman becomes key in the latter's quest, although she has plans of her own. And then in all like lowercase, it says astronomical object in title ape fury planet of the apes. 
What? <laughs> Title Eight Fury. Sorry, furry. I, it, it, it's very specifically furry. Is all one word. What? <laughs> Which are clearly like keywords. It's just very funny to me. Astronomical object in Title Eight Furry Planet of the. <laughs> Thank you, IMDb, for this gift. It just made me laugh. I've been staring at that for the past hour, like, title eight furry. Mm. Nice. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna leave the theory to the end. So, like, uh, let's give it a score. Uh, Ian, how would you score Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? Good, solid eight. Good, solid eight. Really liked it. Not a lot of complaints. Just yeah. good, solid eight. I think I could agree with that. I don't, I don't think I'd... Yeah. I think it's good. That's a it's a good number for it. Solid yeah. eight. Solid eight. That's that's what I give it as well. Solid eight easily. Uh, still can hey, get us. even better. All agreeing. <laughs> All agreeing. <laughs> you look at that. Uh, here's my theory. Uh, obviously, in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, uh, there is a tiny news bit uh, about the astronaut that leaves the planet and becomes uh, the main protagonist of Planet of the Apes. Um, so true. Yes, and obviously there are hints here, and for a long time many people believe that uh, Freya Allen's character is going to be the astronaut in question, uh, given her clothes and everything. Uh, she's not, no. uh, but, but, here's the thing. They look to the stars at mm. the very end, and obviously with the satellites turned back on uh, and everything uh, turning back on, there's I my prediction that this is where we're going to get by the end, like I, I would say by the last movie of this trilogy, uh, because it, it is it looks like it's going to be a trilogy. Mm. Uh, we, we're going to get to the the astronaut reveal and, uh, you know, the person mm. arriving from the past to the future. Because I don't think they're gonna leave that behind. I I think it was always the goal, and it is, uh, it's still the goal to work towards that to get back basically to where this all started. Mm. One of the things. Of <laughs> One of the things that I felt like was being focused on by the reviewers was like they were basically saying, "Oh, we're rehashing a lot of ground. We need to be doing something new." And I was kind of like, "I feel like you're missing the point that that the yeah. re the rehashing of the past is kind of the point of where it what is. we're doing for for this, it, you know, seemingly trilogy." Um, I don't know if that's necessarily negating the criticism, but like it does feel like it is slightly missing the point with what they're going. I for. would agree. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I read a few reviews and, and I I don't think many people see the point of this entire thing. Like, you know, they are obviously changing a lot of things and they are adding, adding a, a lot of new things uh, uh, to it as well. But like, there's, there was always a clear thing that they were going for by the end. Like, you know, it's it's not an accident that it's it, it was in the first movie as well. Like, uh, it's it can be called an Easter egg, sure, but like, that's the big picture there that that they want to get back to that point of the story i'd honestly like the moment you mentioned it i was like oh there really has been there was a lot of references to space in this movie i hadn't put yeah. that together there's really a lot especially, of references. especially all of those shots of the the astronaut on the yeah. wall of the observatory and all that yeah. sort of stuff that's good i like that a lot yeah, yeah. so I, I i definitely think that that's that's where they are going uh with with noah's story uh and i still hope that you know we're changing human characters of the next movie. <laughs> Do you think they'll get there though? In like in the time that we've got maybe left not. with Noah, maybe like, not. Maybe, maybe not. they'll change it entirely by the end. Maybe they'll change it, the 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 whole. I mean, because I, it, I don't know much about the original Planet of the Apes beyond like a lot of the sort of famous iconography and you know the yeah, end yeah, of yeah. the movie and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but. You know, they have clothes, as far as I remember, yes, <laughs> and we don't yes. seem to be anywhere close to that point. I, but given how big of a, well, big time jumps they did uh, for the first trilogy, uh, I definitely can see another time jump for the next movie in this franchise. Mm. Uh, maybe a 10 year or a 5 year time jump, but, but uh, I don't think that they're going to stay in the same timeline uh, that we were uh, with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, so yeah, I, I think time jumps are very much possible going forward, and I think they are already working towards 
that point, like given how much they like, even the movie ends with uh, both of them looking up at at the stars. Mm. So you know, I think we're heading there, nice and slow. Yeah. All right. They are planning nine movies, by the way. <laughs> I read that today. <laughs> okay. Nine. 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 Yes. I don't. Nine. I. It. It's not completely clear that it's going to be nine movies, including these three as well. Or if they are doing nine more on top of these, I I don't think that's clear from the article. But I would I would think that including this as I mean that would make sense. It would it's, yeah. It, it, yeah. if if I were to look at it just from that information, I'd be like, well, three lots of three. That would make mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, to yeah, me. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, exactly. But, so yeah. I don't I don't think they're gonna make like another nine on top of these. I, that that would be a bit of a stretch like i don't want this they've because... already done this a bit there's there's a lot of planet of the apes movies <laughs> yes yeah. uh and these are the best the new ones <laughs> again uh and i very much enjoy it but the fear is going to be still there with every new one that please don't fuck it up like you're doing such a great track record literally all the movies are fresh on rotten tomatoes thankfully uh they are they have really good uh scores on imdb on metascore everywhere i i would like them to keep this like i would like them to keep the feeling because mm. these movies are extremely good with the with the feeling of the entire world and everything like i i oh. I, and I love that they carry it over to that everywhere. point I'm never not a sucker for watching how beautiful environments can get. Yeah. When you just when they when people are like, let's imagine a world where everything gets grown yes. over, and I'm like, yeah, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Every time it's great. Actually, that was one of the other thoughts I had whilst watching the movie. I'd forgotten about it until now. It's really video gamey. Yes. And I is. don't I don't know if that's just because I, there was a part of it. I was like, this feels a lot like The Last of Us, yeah. especially The Last of yes. Us Part Two. Yes. But yeah. I mean, like, I was watching bits of it. Like, that could be a level. That could be a level. Like, uh, like you could. I could really see how you could turn this into a video game. Um, which you know, I'm. It's not a criticism. I actually really enjoyed that aspect. It's of really it. good. I, it, it's. It's. I thought it was a nice um, flavor to the whole thing. Yeah. But now I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done as well. We're all done. Uh, uh, we we once again thank Ian for joining us. Uh, well, for thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I feel honoured. Of course, of course. And, you know, uh, we're not going to be back next week. You're saying this this week, yes. We're not going to be back next week because we are going to Comic-Con. Mm. Uh, and we're all going to meet. All of us. You yes. know, Ryan is going to be there as well. So, like, you're going to get a lot of photos of us, like, being like, jeez. Uh, and uh, that's why you're, you're not going to see our beautiful faces uh, next week. But then we're going to be back after Comic-Con. I don't know what we're going to talk about yet. Probably Furiosa. Um, yeah, Furiosa feels like the most obvious yeah. choice. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably. I have a feeling it might be a live stream just because you're coming back on that yes. Monday. Um, yes. Uh, so just keep an eye out on our, specifically our Twitter for that. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, will, I will make sure to make an effort to, you know, I'm not doing anything that day. <laughs> Fair. Fair game. Uh, all right. Uh, see you all soon. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, rate us, uh, vote for us. Uh, I don't know where you vote for us, but you they, we're not. They, we're not in a competition anyway. Just very, oh, okay. do the rating. Just yeah, just do the, the rating and then uh, subscribe. Did I say that already? Uh, mm. Leave a comment. What did you think of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? And uh, you know, we love you all. And cut the check. Watch movies. <laughs> cut the check. Cut the check. <laughs> That's a new thing. I stole it from Anthony Mackie, but cut the check. 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 That's it. Cut the check. We're done. Cut the check. Oh, that was good. Cut the check. Oh, yeah.